Hello, my name is Michael Fuller. I'm a professional archaeologist in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm doing a mini lecture for Archaeology Now. The lecture is entitled Comets and Three Ancient Omens. My choice of this topic is because NASA announced in July of 2020 that a new comet called Neowise would be visible in the skies over the United States. Well, not new. It probably occurred in the sky 6,000 years ago. And it'll probably be in the sky again 6,000 years in the future, based upon its orbital trajectory. Now, I was hoping it was going to be a really spectacular comet, like Halley's Comet was, you know, two times ago. But indeed, it's turned out to be a fairly faint comet, but I've been able to see it. Comets are important to ancient people because they were omens, and they're very important to archaeologists because sometimes people did things related to the comets they'd seen. I'm gonna talk about three archeological stories. The first one, the Rocky Hollow site. This is in a deep forest in an area not far from where I live. And it's an archeological site I've visited three different times. It was discovered in 1941 by Alan Eichenberger and he published it in 1944. He was a citizen archeologist, an amateur archeologist. He did good work. He was very impressed with the designs that had been carved on the rocks at the Rocky Hollow site. Designs of a man with his hand open, designs of the sun, the moon, of animals, of fish, and many, many thunderbirds. The Rocky Hollow site, one part of it showed what Eichenberger believed to be a bow and arrow, and he thought it was a poison arrow because of its snake-like shaft. In the 1980s, a graduate student from Washington University named Carol Diaz Granatus revisited the site and she came to the conclusion that it was not a bow and poison arrow, but it was a comet that was going over a crescent moon. I visited the site three times, and I've come to the same conclusion of Carol Diaz Granatus, that it's a comet. In fact, this idea that it's a bow was simply a misinterpretation of vapor and dust streams that were coming off the comet's head. In fact, Comet Neowise has a main tail and then has a very strong ion jet steam coming off one side. So it's two-tailed, if you would. And maybe it'll grow a third through time. How old is the Rocky Hollow site? There's evidence of pictures, one of them showing a real bow and arrow. So that means it's gotta be after AD 500. There's also some broken pottery on the ground, prehistoric pottery from around AD 500 to 900. And some of the iconography looks like AD 1000. So somewhere in there, probably 600 to 1,000 is the time period that comet was recorded at the Rocky Hollow site. What did it mean to the person who saw that comet? Now, this is pretty big conjecture, but I'm going to rely on some information from a man who studied the Osage tribe in Missouri and Oklahoma. His name was Francis LaFleche from the Smithsonian Institution, a man who liked to wear a bow tie like me. Francis LaFleche decided when he was asking Osage elders that the word for comet translates into English as star with a long tail. And indeed, Osage see a comet as something wakan, something mysterious and knowable, spiritual, and indeed spurs you to self-reflection, uh, spurs you to behave yourself. Also to the Osage, a comet was a warning, an ill omen, that there might well be an attack by an enemy. Another Native American nation that had traditions about comets are the Pawnees who lived in the Great Plains. They raised corn and hunted buffaloes and lived in large houses, circular in structure. They said that a comet was a feather headdress star. And indeed it does resemble the headdresses worn by Pawnee warriors when they went into battle. The Pawnees have a second story about comets, by the way. They said during the time of creation that the evening star disguised herself as a comet and brought many gifts to the first people. She then, dis the morning star, her sister, disguised herself as a comet and brought more gifts. Hey, comets can do good things too. A second place where I have a comet story is in Chaco Canyon National Monument in New Mexico at a great house, a great ruined pueblo called Penansco Blanco, the White Rock Point. Over 200 rooms were built here and used by probably over a thousand people around AD 900 to around AD 1124. Now, what's interesting is there had been a sky watcher at the site of Penansco Blanco, a prehistoric man 
or woman who is responsible for recording the rising and the setting of the sun, the moon, and anything unusual in the sky. Where that person did their observation, they left four paintings on the rock. Three of those paintings have been interpreted as a supernova of the 5th of July in the year AD 1054. This is a picture recently taken by my friend Megan Murphy. You might be able to make out three paintings. Those are the, quote, supernova paintings. Where is that comet, though? Well, we have to use a special technology called D-stretch technology to bring out the comet, which was older in painting and more faded because of the way it was exposed to sunlight. Here's a close-up of a picture of the comet by my friend Michael Bradford. Again, I've used the D-stretch technology to show you the head of the comet. So when did that comet occur? Well, based upon the time period of tree ring dates for the site, that comet could have been Halley's Comet in the year AD 912, or it could have been Halley's Comet in the year 1066. Now, not all astronomers agree that it's a comet, nor all archeologists, but I vote for the fact, I think it is. The native people who still live in New Mexico who speak a language called Tiwa have a word for comet, and it translates as, guess what? Star with a tail. The same word, but not the same language as what the Osage had. Indeed, the Tiwa see it again as an ill omen, that something not good is going to happen, like sickness or war. My last story about comets is a story not from North America, but from Europe and the Middle East, of a ruler of an ancient country called Pontus. The name of that ruler, Mithridates the Great. Mithridates the Great ruled from 120 BC until 63 BC. He fought three different wars against the Romans. And the Romans record the tradition that Mithridates the Great was born in the year of a huge comet, a comet that filled a quarter of the sky that was brighter than the sun. That's in the year 134 BC. Mithridates the Great, his father was the king, and his mother, well, she may have poisoned her husband so she could take over and rule the country. And Mithridates the Great would hide out, basically, for 14 years until another great comet appeared in the sky, probably the same one, filling the sky for 70 days, bright as the sun. To him, this was a signal that his mother should not rule the country, but he should. So he deposed his mother and he became a fine ruler who ruled very successfully, so much he was called Mithridates the Great. By the way, a few of his coins show the comet. Copper coins show an eight-rayed comet with a tail, and on the back of the coin, it shows the constellation Pegasus, which is apparently where the comet first appeared. Hey, he believed in astrology. Comets was his good sign. Well, I didn't get the world's best picture of the comet when it came through during July 2020. I tried several times. A friend of mine in California, living high up in the mountains, got a beautiful picture. Gail Lee provided me this picture of Comet Neowise. I have to say thank you to members of my family who are also archaeologists, Nethery Batsell Fuller and my brother, Eric Charles Fuller. They good, gave me good advice. Sean Standing Bear, Joe Harrell, Carlton Gover, and the Museum of the Pawnee Nation gave me good advice about the traditions of the Osage and Pawnee Nations. Erica Gibb, Craig Lincoln, and Lou Thimblemoat tried to tell me this comet was not going to be very bright because they're astronomers and they know all about that stuff. Erica Gibb, Craig Lincoln, and Megan Murphy, Michael Bradford, Gary Gaxtadler, and Chip Vaughn all provided me images, which I used. Finally, a thank you to Becky Lau of Archaeology Now for innovating new approaches to sharing the excitement and love of archaeology.